So what were the symptoms of this unit? Um, so when we turned it on, the fan was trying to spin, but it was like... So if you gave it a push, it would go. Yep. And the compressor tried to start, and then stopped, waited yep. a little bit, tried to start again, yep. waited a little bit, so it wasn't starting. So figured it was probably the capacitor. Yep, because it was because, both of them together, because yep. sometimes if it's one or the other, then it's more likely that there's something wrong with the motor or the compressor, but when both of them are not starting, then it's pretty suspect that yep, it's, it's the, the capacitor. Yep, so we took off the other capacitor and it was slightly swelled on the top. And when we tried to measure the microfarads, yep, mm -hmm. right, yeah, uh, it wouldn't take any reading. It didn't think it was a capacitor. Exactly. So we put a new capacitor in it here now, and we're going to turn it on here in a bit. Just going to get it all reassembled. Pretty much there, huh? You didn't have to take it apart too far. <laughs> no, it was, it was pretty easy. Yep. Luckily, the engineers were smart on this one. Awesome. So a couple things about capacitors really quick here. So this is our replacement capacitor. Uh, the old one was a um, a 370 volt one. So this is a 40 and 5 uh, capacitor, which means it basically has two capacitors in one. You have a common and then a fan and a Herm terminal. Herm is for the compressor and that's for the 40. And then the fan is a 5. And the old capacitor was a 370, like I was saying. And you can replace a lower voltage capacitor with a higher voltage one, like this. This one is both for 440 or 370, but you can't do the other way around. So if it was a 440 capacitor, you'd need to go back with a 440 for sure, and not a 370. Uh, I'll link to uh, how to test a capacitor uh, here. I'll either put a card up or put it in the description so you can go through the process of testing it. I'll also put... Uh, electrical tester that is capable of testing uh, capacitors in the description. Alright, we've got it juiced up. We'll turn it on here. And it should come on. Fan started right up. And the compressor started just right away. Yay! So, it's pumping out the uh, high side here and coming back on the suction line. Just we'll let it run for a couple minutes. And we'll test our temperature drop across this coil just to see what it's doing. So I'm going to switch my uh, electrical tester into temperature mode and plug that in. I have the thermistor. There's multiple different thermometers you can use with this. Degrees Fahrenheit. Don't stick it in, just hold it on the outside here. We'll get our ambient temperature first. Oh. So we're getting a reading around uh, 86, 87 degrees uh, for our ambient temperature. So I'm gonna put this down in the stream of air coming back out of the air conditioner. And we should be looking for at least like a 20 degree temperature drop, preferably. And we're getting basically a full 20 degrees, 67 to 87, 87 to 67. So this unit is working at full capacity. So that was our problem, bad capacitor. That's easy enough. So thankfully not all of the service calls are ultra complicated. This one wasn't too bad, but it's not always how it goes. We will talk to you in the next video.